Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, three different uh, techniques and also to detect uh, the different types of genetic markers that are available. So the techniques are RFLP, RAPD and AFLP. So what are those three techniques? Because I, have, I found many students have to have some confusion between these three techniques and what are this stuff and how to do all this stuff. So let's, let's talk about that just at the basic level and to, to actually distinguish between three different processes. So actually RFLP, RAPD and AFLP, all of these three things uh, are methods to check uh, the presence of genetic markers in a genome of organism. Because you know genetic markers are uh, most of the time the repetitive sequences of DNA that are present throughout the genome. Because the repeated sequences are very useful for us to detect uh, either the genetic disease or we can detect uh, or we can we can do the barcoding of gene so that we can do DNA fingerprinting we can use that for forensics and many other applications so that's the feature of uh, feature of gene uh, markers or genetic markers and we can detect the presence of genetic markers by this process like RFLP, AFLP and RAPD right so what are those stuff let's talk about them First is RFLP. RFLP is termed as uh, Restriction Fragment Length Polymorphism. So what does that mean? RFLP recruits, uh, I mean RFLP requires, so if I draw it here, it probably you can hear me, I don't know whether you can hear, uh, look at me or not. RFLP uh, is a PCR, a non-PCR based approach, it's a restriction enzyme based approach to find out uh, the specific repeated sequences. That means say individual 1 and this is individual 2. Individual 1, uh, let's say we are using an enzyme EcoR1. It's a common type of restriction enzyme that we can use. And if you use EcoR1 in individual 1 genome, that EcoR1 can cleave from this region, from only this region. So this is EcoR1 cleave site. Okay. In individual 2, the EcoR1 cleavage site is present twice. Okay, so due to the sequence change or pattern change in the genome, we have variety in the restriction endonucleus activity. So in case of individual 1 and individual 2, in both the case, if we treat them with eco R1, in case of individual 1, we will find two different, I mean two different fragments of the DNA and individual 2 will find three different fragments of the DNA. So if you run the gel, if you run the gel, Averroes gel, individual this is say the marker in individual a and b uh, one or two in individual one will find only two bands but individual b will find three bands okay so these are the things that we can see by looking at this gel pattern we can tell that individual a and b are different so this can act as their genetic makeup or this can act as their dna fingerprinting and we can use this DNA fingerprint for detection of disease and also change in the single nucleotide inside the genome so we can find the single nucleotide polymorphism also so these are the things uh, that we can do with restriction fragment length polymorphism now the second thing RAPD RAPD is random amplified polymorphic DNA, the full form, random amplified polymorphic DNA. So what does that mean, random amplified polymorphic DNA? You know, random amplification of the DNA is done in RAPD technique, right? Because in this technique, it is a PCR based technique. It utilizes PCR or polymerase chain reaction to amplify a specific segment of target DNA. Now, whatever DNA we have, let's say a genome or target DNA we have, what will you do? We amplify it using PCR. But in this case, the amplification is random in nature. That's why I call random amplified polymorphic DNA. Polymorphic means the DNA is different from individual 1 to 2 to 3. From different individuals, the, the DNA sequence is also different. So what you do, if we take the DNA, the large DNA, DNA strand in our hand, we randomly add primers. We, we get some primers, we got some primers from outside and we randomly design those primers and we randomly place those primers, we apply those primers so that they can pair with any random place in the DNA, right? 
we denature the DNA so that uh, the primers can anneal. It can it can anneal to any of those random sequences, and then it can amplify a specific region of the DNA. So do the random amplification, and then we load it into the gel and check the data. You may ask what what possible thing it might get. Actually, random amplification is or RNA technique is performed multiple times. Uh, throughout the genome. We take the genome, we extract the genome, we do this multiple times to get the data. And once you get the multiple times data, that data we get, we load that data into a software program. That software will analyze that data to give us some idea, a fact. And we usually do this RFID for, uh, for, the, for, for plant uh, detection and the plant pre-selection uh, for the breeding. And also we can use it for the pre-selection for the breeding of other animals like dog and cat and all this stuff. Okay, so those are the things that we can do with RAPD. It's a random amplification and again it will bind to anywhere. The primer can bind with any place because we are, we provide short and small primers like 7 to 8, uh, 5 to 7 base pair long primers. So it can bind repeatedly in different regions in the DNA. Okay, and then you can amplify it by PCR. So that is RAPD. And the third type of techniques we are going to talk about is uh, RFLP. Oh, RFLP we have talked about. It's AFLP, sir. It's AFLP. So what is AFLP? Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism. That's what AFLP stands for. Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism. Now, Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism uh, means in this case, we use both restriction digestion as well as PCR reaction. You know, Amplified Fragment Length so we amplify using PCR and then we can also use the restriction enzymes to do that. So what is the process of AFLP actually it's a little bit more complicated compared to the RFLP and RAPD because RFLP and RAPD is a single direction process but actually in AFLP is pretty modern technique where we combine the feature of RFLP as well as RAPD together uh, to get better results. So I, I must uh, erase that otherwise you have may not see this. So I must talk only about the RA, only about AFLP now. So what is AFLP? In AFLP what we have, we have a stretch of DNA and there are different regions in the DNA. There are some target regions also in the DNA, it's also present in the DNA. So what we do actually, we treat this total segment of the DNA with restriction enzyme. Let's say we do it with ECOR1 and we also do it with HIND. D3. We also do it with HIND3. Eco R1 and HIND3. So you treat them. Now we know the sequence, the, the restriction sites are present uh, in the terminal region of our target site of the DNA. So once you do that, it will keep the target DNA from there. Let's say it will develop three different fragments like this. Okay. This is the target site. That's how the three different set fragments are generated. Now, once the fragments are generated, we add some adapters. And the adapter actually bind. Adapters bind to the terminal region of the target DNA only. Why we put adapters? Putting adapters give us two different functionality. One is that adapters will specifically interact only with the target DNA. It will not interact with the other DNA. Though it can interact with this DNA, but it can interact only in one side, not the other sides of the DNA. So only the target DNA is added, adapted in both the sides. That is possible here. Once that thing, this is the first function of the adapter, that it can bind with the target section only. And second function is that we know the sequence of the adapter. So we can design primers accordingly to amplify this whole target section of the DNA. Right? So then we design primers and we do the PCR by adding primers. So we'll get multiple copies of our target DNA. And then we load it into the gel to see uh, what section of the DNA we amplify. And you see the pattern of amplification. And whenever the same target, I mean let's say the target is a repeated unit. Whenever this target is present multiple times in the genome, that many times we get the bands in the gel. So by looking at the bands in the gel, we can again tell about 
the genetic makeup of that organ is very easy. That's the idea of AFLP, Amplified Fragment Length Polymorphism. But all in this case, RFLP requires the sequence to know because for detection of RFLP, we definitely need to know the sequence of the gene we want to detect, uh, sequence of the gene we want to find, because otherwise we cannot apply the restriction enzyme to do that, right? But RMPD does not require to know the sequence because in this case we add primers which will bind randomly. We don't have to know the sequence. So that's the advantage of RMPD. We don't have to know the sequence. But in RFLP, we have to know the sequence. In AFLP also, we have to know the sequence a little extinct to do this stuff, right? But it's much more sensitive, it's much more accurate compared with the AFLP, RAPD and RFLP. Okay, that's why it's a modern techniques that we use. So that in a sense is RFLP, AFLP and RAPD. I hope you guys understand the process. If you know and help, if this video helps you, please hit the like button, subscribe this channel for, to get more and more videos like that and also share this video with your friends. Thank you.